All right, it's 10 p.m. on May 17, 2020, and welcome to the weather update. Um, kind of much cooler today, 57 in Central Park. We're going to look at some of the current temperatures. Um, 55 in Farmingdale. You know, the funny thing is, I, you know, one of the things that sucks about living in a place where you just got a little alleyway, or I can't even call this an alleyway, but it's like a courtyard or whatever, is the air holds under the heat. I measured the temperature of the air coming in through my window, it was 64. Uh, so it just traps the heat, it just, you know, it's kind of warm in my apartment. I may have to put the air conditioner on. It's just, you know, I hate putting the air conditioner on when it's so cool out, but. Anyway, 65 degrees was the high today at Farmingdale. So much cooler than yesterday uh, with the southeast wind. Uh, we're gonna look at some of the conditions across our area. So you can see here, we've got generally mid 50s across the area right now. So pretty cool, pretty cool night. Unless you're living where I'm living, um, even in Jersey Shore, it's 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 cooler. Um, uh, so that's uh, it's not too bad out there. It's pretty cool compared to yesterday, uh, and uh, we're going to be staying on the cool side now. Before I go and uh, talk about the obvious, <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about the obvious in just a minute. Uh, a lot of red flag warnings out west. You can see a lot of red flag warnings. Looks like. Flagstaff may be included in that red flag warning. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just shy of it, but let's see. That's Flagstaff, so they're in a red flag warning because it's been very dry, uh, so they may have to worry about uh, forest fires, and I believe we had a couple of fires in the Pine Barrens today in New Jersey. Uh, I'll have to talk about that in another video, so it looks like we have... Let's see what we got out here, because this has to do with Arthur, so let's just cut to the chase already because, you know, that's what everybody wants to talk about. Uh, so this brown is a tropical storm warning. So it looks like there's a tropical storm warning in effect for eastern North Carolina. Wow. So uh, let's cut right to the chase. Let's let's talk about it. Because, <laughs> you know, that's what everybody wants to talk about. And uh, that's what I want to talk about, too. Tropical storm Arthur. Uh, so maximum sustained winds are now 45 miles an hour. Minimum central breadth pressure of 1,004 millibars, and it's moving north-northeast at 9 miles an hour. So um, we're going to go to tropical tidbits right now and go to the current storms. Here's tropical storm Arthur right here. So let's take a look at the latest satellite loop of this. Still looks kind of disorganized. We'll wait for it to load here. Uh, but you'll see it's, it's definitely, you can definitely see the circulation. Um, and you can see it's moving toward uh, eastern North Carolina right now. Uh, so let's go and look at some of the model forecasts that we have on this thing. Uh, the official NHC hurricane, actually, let me get the official track from the National Hurricane Center. Let's get it here in the large here so you can see it a little better. So this is the official track, and the good news is it doesn't affect us. Thank God it does not affect us. It's going to brush North Carolina. It's going to stay a tropical storm. probably won't become a hurricane. Uh, and then it's going to go out to sea and then track like this because there's going to be a strong high that's going to be building down over New England that will keep this away from us. We'll also keep the rain in the upper level low away from us as well for a good part of the week. So fortunately, it does track offshore. So tropical storm warning just for extreme eastern um, North Carolina there, and then it kind of heads out to sea. So oh, and then it did finally it finally did load from try. I don't know. The site's going to be a little slow because. You know, a lot of people are using it. So let's look at the global models here in this. Every bottle takes it out to sea, except for this one. It does a loop-de-loop, -loop and then it come, brings it back in. That, that's an outlier. But every model, it's an unusual track that it gets suppressed this far to the south, but it's because of the strong ridging. You'll see when we go and we look at the models, you'll see uh, what's going on. So let's go to the models right now. And we're going to go start with the GFS, and we are going to start with the upper air once again because the upper air is key as to what this is doing. I'm not going to go to the conus view. You'll get the idea here uh, by just by looking at this. So there's your coastal. There's your uh, coastal. Um, it's a tropical storm. It's, it's kind of weak. A GFS just kind of doesn't have it get too strong and then it suppresses it. And we just have this huge ridge and it keeps this upper level low over the southeast. Uh, well, this cutoff low, but it stays dry for us and then it just fades away. The upper level low. So this is good. We may not see much rain at all, uh, which, well, may not be a good thing because it's actually been a little dry around here. But you know what? So be it. 
You know, I know it means more brush fires in the Pine Barrens, but remember, fire is a good thing in the Pine Barrens. You can see this ridge is just acting like a, a catcher's mitt. It's just holding it there. Uh, then we'll look at the European model. Probably has the same idea. See, here's the European model. Has the same idea. So we have an agreement, and it really doesn't bring, it doesn't really look that impressive on the upper air of this tropical system. Uh, so this is good for us. This is very good for us. You know, the only, the only areas that are going to get affected are eastern North Carolina. So let's go and look at the surface, and I'm going to change this over to the eastern United States region. And we'll start looking at the surface. So there is Arthur. And this is the 18Z GFS run. So there is Arthur. Why is this not moving? Oh, there we go. Uh, so there is Arthur there, uh, and you can see it takes it really. Now, the GFS winds this up quite a bit. You, can, you don't see it reflect much on the upper air because it is a tropical system. I've got to remind myself that. Um, so this thing does strengthen quite a bit. It goes down to 989, but thank God, look at that. It stays away. Imagine if this thing went, went, went and hit us. It would be the last thing we would need. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that. Uh, instead, it stays suppressed to the south and then moves out to sea, and then just kind of dissipates and this high literally keeps us dry all week no rain until we get to maybe Friday maybe yeah that's when we might see a little rain Friday and Saturday uh, as the remnants of that cutoff come come into the picture but for most of the week it stays dry uh, which is excellent news um, I'm gonna go and look at the NAM track now this is the zero Z NAM I really need to use the 18Z because it's not going to go far enough out. So here is the NAM track. A similar idea. Keeps it away. There's that high that's coming down and protecting us. So that high is literally protecting us. We'll uh, draw the high. So that high is literally coming down and forcing everything away to the south of us. So thank God we have this high building in from eastern Canada that's going to suppress uh, this uh, this tropical storm because that's all we would need uh, from hitting our area. But you can see what the NAM does. It kind of like gives some remnants and then it gets absorbed in the upper level. Oh, that's as far as the NAM goes out. Uh, we can look at the Canadian as well. So I think they're all, all the models are pretty much in agreement, which makes the job of forecasting very easy now. Very easy. And then it actually develops, a, a, that might be a coastal low, but that's the Canadian for you. And the Canadian keeps us dry right through the week. We don't see a speck of rain out of this. So wow, what a difference a couple of days makes on these models, huh? Because if we go now, look at the GFS, and look at the total rainfall, We'll see it has changed quite a bit probably, so we will look at the total accumulated rainfall here. What a difference it makes. What a difference it makes. Look at that. So even if we go to the end of the period, you see we're not in that 10-inch plus that we were getting. Thank God it didn't get caught up in the upper level low, otherwise we would have been so screwed. We would have been so damn screwed. So I want to look at the winds on the GFS. So here is the storm here coming across North Carolina. There it is. Actually, I guess I should look at the eastern. Widen this out a little bit. Still look at the eastern region here so you can see the whole, whole thing. All right, so you can see it brushes. They get brushed with tropical storm force winds just probably on the outer banks. And then it stays out to sea and it doesn't bother anyone. The only thing that we might see is some coastal uh, coastal flooding and beach erosion because even though we're not going to really see that much wind, that wind, when we go over to here, and I'll change this back to our region here, that wind is going to be coming and piling the water up. Um, you have that east wind, it's going to just be piling the water up. Uh, this is going to especially baby out on the Jersey Shore. But also we'll get a little bit of on the south shore as well and the east end, I think, uh, with that wood piling up. Um, that's impressive. And there's an area now of, you can almost see, 55 mile an hour winds. This thing just strengthens. 
very strong storm for uh, May to see. Uh, very unusual to see this. Now I want to look at the NAM on the winds. And we're going to go look at the NAM 12 kilometer. And again, let me move this to the 18Z. So here is here's your 12 kilometer winds. Similar idea, similar agreement into this. We will get into some breezy conditions, most likely on Tuesday. Um, but other than that, it's just going to be that constant east flow that we're going to have to be careful about. Uh, it's close enough that it will have effects on the coastline, I think. So NAM isn't quite as strong with it. You'll notice the NAM is much weaker than the GFS. The GFS is the NAM only has it at 10:03, whereas the GFS has it at at uh, 9:90. Let's see what's it have. 9:93, 9:90, 9:90. It has it going down a lot lower. So. That's very interesting to see that. Um, there's definitely some variability in the models here. Um, there's also a hurricane model called the HWRF. So we can look at this. And this actually follows the storm. So you can see here the HWRF. I don't see it. Yeah, there, there it is. There's, the, there's its landfall with the Carolinas. So there's the HWRF. Doesn't look like it's going to be too bad for them. And like I said, the worst of it stays offshore, according to the HWRF. Uh, so that's another model that we can use. So right now, it looks it's looking like good news for us as far as the storm goes. Uh, and oh, oh, I'm in GFS Arthur. No, no, I got to go back to the. Let's change this back to the North American regions here. Okay, so now we're going to look at our temperatures and see how our temperatures are going to do the next couple of days here in the northeast. All right, with that east flow, it's probably going to keep things cool. But tomorrow, this still warms up into the upper 60s, which indicates sunshine. Uh, and then as we go into Tuesday also, a little cooler, maybe, maybe mid-60s. Cooler still on Wednesday. Probably see a little more clock. Thursday, we're still getting up well into the 60s, maybe 70 and Friday might be a little cooler. Other than that, I mean, it's staying below normal. So we're not seeing any heat, which is fine by me. Maybe toward the end of the month we'll see some heat. But not really. It looks like the heat is going to stay away. And I'm, I'm very happy about that. Trust me. Very happy about that. Uh, so uh, let's go. And that's just personally my, my, you know, some of you may like the heat. That's okay. Um, go ahead and look at the clouds. I'm sure there'll be plenty of clouds around. Probably of the high variety. Uh, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. A little less, maybe. Tries to maybe clear it. I don't know if we're going to have any clear days or not, but you don't know. The mo Sometimes you get that dry area north of the storm, that'll, and we get some nice clear skies. Let's see it, if these are low clouds or... Uh, all right, I'm going to split the clouds up now. This is the low cloud. Yeah, it's just it's just going to be high clouds mainly. So the sun's probably still going to be out. You're just going to be dealing with some high clouds, probably mid and high level clouds uh, this week. Uh, but the good news is the rain, it looks like it stays away. There is some rain on the radar tonight, which uh, I will bring up. Actually, I almost forgot here. A couple of very, li very light showers, probably not even reaching the ground. Um, we will look at the HRRR because this is a, a rapid update model, and we'll see. Uh, how it handles uh, the storm. So here's what it looks like on the HRRR. And you can see here, again, it keeps the rain away. Keeps us dry. Keeps us dry. And we'll look at the NAM. I'm going to look at the NAM 3 kilometer now. Again, we're going to go to the 18Z because I don't have enough of the, the one in yet. So here's the NAM 3 kilometer. Keeps the rain away. So that's good. It's keeping the rain away. It's quite a storm. This could have been really bad, but luckily somebody upstairs was looking out for us. Kept the storm away from us. So let's go look at the clouds and we'll see. Hands out with the clouds here. 
I mean, we won't really be seeing much humidity either. I mean, dew points in the 40s probably. You know, pretty much like what we had today. Very comfortable. It's Tuesday. You can see. Maybe Tuesday we might get some mostly sunny skies there. I'll have to see. We may get some mostly sunny days out of this high that's going to be coming down. Uh, and look at the dew points. So we go from misery to possibly nice weather to go to the Pine Barrens. Thank God. You can see humidity is suppressed to the south. There, even drier air comes in on Tuesday, so it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. It'll be breezy, but it'll be nice out. It'll be nice. So let's go to windy.com, which is the last model I'll look at here before I wrap up this update. Let's uh, we're gonna look at the wind gusts here. This is the again based on the European model. Um, let's actually take a look at the storm itself. Go back down. Here's the storm. Here is Arthur. And we're looking at the wind gusts. So it looks like some of the stronger wind gusts, maybe a 40 mile an hour, could get to the Cape. Breezy in the rest of eastern North Carolina. And then there it goes out to sea. But you can clearly see this thing has really got a nice structure to it. And in the northeast summer circle, you're having uh, wind gusts up to 67 miles an hour. And for our area, uh, this is Monday night. Monday we shouldn't be seeing too much wind. It'll be a little breezy, I think. Tuesday we'll be seeing a little more wind, but just breezy. It won't, we're probably not going to need any wind advisories. Uh, but look at that around the center of this thing, and you can see this is what's going to cause that coastal the coastal issues. 67 mile an hour. So this thing's pretty wound up. Look at that. It gets even more intense. 92! Euro's really exploding this thing. Uh, wow. Could it become a hurricane? Whoa. Could it become hard? Now, Yara might just be going nuts here. That's the gusts. This is the sustained. Um, but wow, that's impressive. This is going to be something to watch. Wow, this is going to be something to watch. It's still out there as of Tuesday. In our area, we'll be dealing with a little more wind. 30 mile an hour gusts, but that's still not nothing that bad. Yeah, let's go ahead and look at, uh, look at it. It's still Wednesday, so it's getting pushed to the southeast. And then it's gone. I wonder where it's going to wind up. It's just going to get... Yeah, it's just going to get pushed down like that. That's, that shows you how strong this high is. It's just pushing it down. And luckily, the high was strong enough to do that. Thank God uh, that it was. So we'll just go ahead and look at the clouds on this. So probably have uh, more clouds and sun tomorrow. But I still think there will be some breaks of sun. Especially in the afternoon, we'll look at Tuesday. A little more sun. Yeah, a little more sun on Tuesday. Let's look at Wednesday. Wednesday could be a clear day. Let's look at Thursday. Thursday could be a clear day. So, wow. Looks like we're going to have some nice weather. So, wow. Uh, you know, we, we ho hopefully this is all right because we're going to have a great week. And we need it. Uh, and Arthur is going to be out to sea bothering the fish. Well, the fish aren't bothered by it. We're bothering the ships. So Arthur looks like it is staying away. Thank God. So that's going to be it for this weather update. Take care. Thank you for watching.